Okay, a bit of an update regarding my residency in Spain today. Um, it's a, it was a lot more complicated than it should have been. Um, I'll be honest with you, I think if I'd gone in myself, because uh, I asked April to book my appointment for me, because um, the thing is, we're doing April's paperwork, I've got to go to Alicante anyway. But if you if it's just myself, I just do it locally. Um, but I know from a friend of mine who did his, he did his own in Torbea, then went to Alicante to do his wife and kids there. Um, why is it more complicated? Well, if being on my own, going in there to do my paperwork as a single person, I just had to show several bits of documents and it would have been fine. But if they're aware you've got more family, etc., they want everybody's information, but also where you would have set the bar at, say, I don't know, a thousand euros a month income in five and a half thousand euros in the bank. Um, they will suddenly go, oh yeah, but you need twenty thousand, and you need this amount in the um, monthly income. Um, a little bit frustrating, but it's not the end of the world. But I will say, here's a little handy tip that I've got my folder here. If you're coming from the UK, there's a bilateral agreement for your insurance, which you can actually transfer from the UK to Spain. So if you, I think it's the first two years, you're actually covered for medical insurance. So you don't need to have private insurance if you're moving to Spain long term. Um, private insurance, by the way, spent a couple of days phoning around trying to get quotes etc um, and I still haven't had my quotes I've, nobody's called me yet um, this left me with no medical insurance to go to the uh, thing today which is why they said well you don't actually need it you just need to phone Newcastle ask for this and they'll transfer it to you okay know that for next time but the other point here is don't get frustrated by it because when you go there at least you've got something to work with until you go you don't know what you're dealing with um, my frustration now is they say okay well you've got to have an income and I'm like okay well what how much do you want me to have and the response is um, I can't tell you and I'm like okay well I've got money in the bank I've got money in my bank in the Philippines I've got money in the bank in the UK We've got apartments in the Philippines, so I've got income in the Philippines. I've got a call set of business. I've got money coming in from Google, PayPal, um, and I'm available to work if I can, you know, if I can find some work locally. Um, how much do you want? Uh, but nobody would actually tell me. <laughs> so come home, and I'm sitting there thinking, okay, well, where do we go from here? Um, another positive thing today, though, they did give me my SIP card, which is your Spanish um, medical card, which entitles me to local um, health care. Um, they did that on the fly. You just give me your EHIC, they'll, they'll do it for you there and then. Because um, then the they just build the UK anyway, so they're not really fussed on doing that. But if you're going to be a resident, your EHIC card is not... Um, compliant it won't cover you that's why it's so important to do the SIP code so my residence here now I've got several options one put a large amount of money in the bank Two, find a job um, which I am going to put some feelers out to see if anybody want anything because the thing with me I don't mind working I don't mind working even in a restaurant or something I don't care you know at the end of the day when I'm working away from home and work in the UK I do a 16 hour day um, in places that are pretty bland so going to work in a restaurant or something it's, it's something different so I don't mind doing it for six months or whatever if that's what I have to do but the third option is going self-employed self-employed is looking more likely but I wouldn't mind being employed and self-employed um, but if I go employed I wouldn't need to do the self-employment route. Um, I could actually show income from the Philippines or whatever, which shouldn't be taxed. Uh, there's been a, a bit of a thing on that at the moment because Spanish tax you on your global income or try to, and your global assets. But the reality is it's actually been pushed through the EU as an illegal. 
um, more in line with the UK where you get taxed on your UK, UK income. So going forward, I've got to make a decision on what I'm going to do with this. But also, I've been out with my friend Igor yesterday looking at properties that are for sale. And as we're wandering, wandering around this morning, me and April were waiting for the uh, foreigner's office to um, not be open, but for our appointment. There is at least 10 real estate agents on that one strip alone. That tells me there's a huge market there. Because it doesn't matter how bad the sales are, the fact that they've got 10 real estate agents in one street that isn't a major street, but then Lamata's got at least six to 10 real estate agents. And then you go to um, anywhere in this area, they've all got real estate agents. So from my point of view, I'm thinking real estate may be the way to go for me. Um, I could do that even as a sideline, you know, because I've got my friend Keith's here. He's been here like um, as long as the standard. <laughs> Um, so I can work with Keith on this stuff because he's already in the real estate business so there's options there the only thing we're doing real estate is self-employed normally because it's all commission based so that's it today's okay it's not gone my way but the reason I'm making this video is to turn around and say hey I don't always get it right hey it's not a perfect world out there it's what you do with the situation and rather than going, well, this isn't right, uh, which I know some people do, I go, okay, well, what do you want? What do you want me to do? You know, I'll do whatever it takes. At the end of the day, that's what matters. I need to get this done. What do I need to do to do it? And I just wanted to share this with everybody else out there because I know other people are going through the same frustrations as well, not in Spain, well, in Spain and other countries. But at the same time, be polite, just go through the motions. At the end of the day, they are working to a process. The process is not what they wrote, it's what some somebody in Madrid or whatever wrote. In the UK it's the same, although um, I would say that it's much, people are more approachable in Spain than the UK uh, when it comes to immigration and stuff, because there seems to be some sort of attitude issues a lot of time in the UK. Um, not my personal view, but it's just from, well, yeah, it's my personal view, but it's just from my own experiences as well, um, as, w uh, as well as other people's, where it's just immigration. But anyway, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching.